Hey, everybody, it's the coach, and this is Monday Night Football on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see the GOAT, Tom Brady of the Super Bowl champion New England Patriots as they square off against second-year man Sam Darnold and the new-look New York Jets. With that, we head up to MetLife Stadium as we'll hand it over to the two men that'll call the action, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. The coach take the Lincoln Tunnel through Weehawken, through Secaucus, across the Hackensack River, and you'll arrive, as we have, at MetLife Stadium at East Rutherford, New Jersey. A few minutes ago, the hometown Jets were introduced to this sellout crowd, and it's a roar that could be heard across the river in Manhattan. They're set to go as their Jets will match up with Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. Brandon Gordon with Charles Davis. Charles, AFC East matchup. And if we look back, everybody knows this, but the last 16 years of the AFC East, 15 times it's been won by these Patriots. The other three teams in the division, Jets, Buffalo, Miami, they kind of remind me of the old Brooklyn Dodgers. Remember their rally cry? Wait till next year, because that's what it's been like trying to chase down the Patriots. I don't think the Patriots are even vulnerable yet. If anyone wins this division other than the Pats, they're going to have to earn it. There's Mike Nugent now to put this one in the air. And off we go on EA Sports. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. here. This here will go. be a touchback, here and it go. comes out to the 25-yard line. Jets taking the field, led by Sam Darnold, and they were happy to have him week six in that upset win over Dallas, 24-22. to Because remember, Darnold had been out since week one, but in his return, 338 yards, two touchdowns. And we saw an inspired Jets team. They scored a touchdown the first drive, and the defense was aggressive all the way through. But I think what also helped, he thought he was going to return last week. So they installed him back as the starting quarterback in practice. He took most of the reps. So when they ruled him out last week, he actually had gained a week of conditioning, being ready to play, and it showed against Dallas. He came out of the gate strong. Bell, room here to run. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. Bell, of course, three-time 1,000-yard rusher. Sat out 2018, but you look back to 2017, a tick under 1,300 yards and almost 700 more receiving. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. Push him back. Push him back. And they'll keep it on the ground with Bell. Kyle Van Noy, the Pats' leading tackler in their Super Bowl run, in on the stop. The offensive starters now for the Jets. And with all the moves the New York Jets made in the offseason, one of the more valuable pickups, Kalechi Osemele, a two-time Pro Bowl guard who they got from the Raiders in a trade back in March. You know the Jets are going to try and run the football with Le'Veon Bell now. Osemele is one of the best moving guards in the NFL. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Here's Darnold. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 12 yards there and a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. The shotgun snap for Darnold. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Jonathan Jones that time, the one who got a hand in, knocked it away. Starting lineup here for New England, number one in the NFL in total defense, Charles. And really that started at the end of last season. Throughout the playoffs, and especially the Super Bowl, when they shut down the high-flying Rams and only gave up three points in that game. But they continued it this year. And you don't have a lot of stars on that side of the ball. You don't sit there and go, oh, this guy and that guy. But collectively, they're as good as we've seen in recent years. Big game against the Giants, week six. Their first game with a block punt and a fumble return for a touchdown since 1986. Powerful running. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. 
to throw is Darnold. And he held on to it too long. A coverage sack. Down he goes. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. Fourth down, here's Lachlan Edwards to punt it. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Here comes Tom Brady and the New England Patriots offense. And it was another night at the office for number 12 on that Thursday night in week six against the Giants. Threw for 334 yards. I don't care about that. The stat that I want to talk about, two touchdown <laughs> runs for Tom Brady. And he wanted to get that second one. Now, do you count them as runs when they're sneaks? No, no. They're more just like fall forwards behind a good offensive line. But he does it so well, doesn't he? Because a lot of quarterbacks cannot execute the sneak properly. Tom Brady has made it art form. And what was really interesting about it is when I look at those final numbers of 41 for 334, there were times in that game, I don't know what you thought, I thought he was actually struggling. I didn't think he played all that well, yet at the end, 31 of 41, 334, two touchdown runs, and oh yes, a win. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches, so as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line, second and a yard. Now the leading rusher for the Pats last year is a rookie, Sony Michelle. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. And let's give you a look here at the New England offense. Sony Michelle was taken near the end of the first round in the 2018 draft, but boy, did he earn his keep in that season with New England. Really came out in the playoffs, scored the only touchdown in the Super Bowl win over the Rams. Expect bigger and better from Sony Michelle moving forward. They'll run with a former Super Bowl hero. It's James White. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because... They handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Check nickel, nickel, nickel. Brady gives to Michelle. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And the defense for New York. One of the best young safeties in the NFL, Jamal Adams. Keep an eye out for him because no one is safe when he's on the field, including mascots. Just ask Pat the Patriot. Jamal Adams was also the 2019 Pro Bowl defensive MVP. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now they'll throw with Brady. And that is incomplete here. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Open man is Gordon, complete. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets, 42. Well, that didn't take very long. You mentioned you have to keep him under wraps. Avoid the big play is what you said, and here he makes one in the first quarter. Yeah, you can't let this become a habit. Otherwise, you know what will happen? He'll flat out take over this game. Hey, 
So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 42 yard line. On play action, now Brady. Complete to Watson, the tight end. And he's taken down inside the 30. That one good for 13 at a New England first down. Second tour of duty for Watson with the Patriots. Remember, New England drafted him way back in 2004 out of Northwestern. He retired in the offseason after finishing the campaign with New Orleans, but decided to come back for one more go-around with the Patriots, and they might need him, especially with Rob Gronkowski no longer in uniform. And pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes this forward for about six. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Brady going to throw. He's got Lacoste, his tight end. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes... You're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Into the red zone, it's Brady. Looking for Edelman, and he hits him. It's complete. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. A gain of six there on first. Edelman coming off another big game in week six against the Giants on Thursday night. Nine catches, 113 yards, both season highs. And that's now back-to-back 100-yard -back games as he went for 110 against Washington the week before. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Caught by the tight end, Watson. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. An 11-yard touchdown. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Now Mike Nugent for the extra point. And he gets it to make it 7-0 Patriots. So that one along 11-play drive. And the gadget play gets him into the end zone. After the touchdown, here's Mike Nugent now to kick this one away. And that one carries out of the side of the end zone for a touchback, so that will come out now to the 25-yard line. As the Jets come back on the field here, CD, want to revisit what we discussed about Sam Darnold. Kind of re-energized the team in week six when they beat the Cowboys. First win of the season, so at one and four, I don't think you're ready to proclaim them as a playoff team, are you? I am not, and the tough part for them is in a normal year in the AFC East, they're the equal of Buffalo and Miami. Well, this year, they may be better than Miami, but I don't know that they're the equal of Buffalo, and I leave New England out because you know they're going to win the division, usually going away. So it's going to be very tough for them to get in the playoff contention. But this team will play better with Darnold at quarterback. And they're hoping to get C.J. Mosley back at linebacker, too. Now this week, they host New England. Not going to be easy. And then they hit the road to go to Jacksonville with that stingy defense. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Now Bell. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, 
you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. I got you. I got you. From the gun on third down, here's Darnold. This is Bell on the dump off. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. There are a lot of tough routes to try and cover. When you see a runner come out of the backfield and run this angle route, looks like they're going to the flat, and then they put their foot in the ground and cut back sharply inside. Not easily covered, and then when they catch it, good momentum built up by them as well. And able to pick up the first. Darnold off the play fake to Bell. On the catch, it's Crowder. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. 23 yards, the final tally. And that's where Crowder makes his hay in the slot. Jets hoping to see more of that going forward. He signed with him in March after the last four seasons being in Washington. Had three pretty good years and sort of tailed off last season due in large part to an ankle injury. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. Herndon's got it complete. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. And carry by Bell. They stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Here's Darnold. That's caught. It's Thomas. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 11 yards there. First down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. They'll try and run it in with Bell. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Second and goal from the six this time. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from MetLife Stadium. The Jets with the football here as they come up now second and goal. Come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Now Darnold. And it's a touchdown for the Jets. A six-yard touchdown run as they are now on the board here in the first half. But this was a pass all the way, but he just kept buying time, didn't he? It was kind of like, wait, wait. Oh, it's open. Time to hot-foot it and go. 
And boy, was he successful. Yeah, didn't go to the outside toward the pylon, just straight ahead, middle third of the field. Shortest distance between two points. Straight line. Extra point right down the middle. And we are tied at seven. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And he almost flirted with disaster there, but it does get into the end zone before going out, and they'll bring it out to the 25. The 6-0 Patriots coming back out onto the field here, Charles, and that means that I want to play a game called Who Can Give Them Their First Loss, if anybody, because they have three of the next four on the road at the Jets, who look better with Sam Darnold back beating the Cowboys, and then they come home for the Browns. But anyways, you tell me who could give them their first loss. Well, they do have two very interesting road games after the Browns game at Baltimore and at Philadelphia, and you would think those would be the most difficult ones. I'm centering in on the Browns because they will be a very desperate team by the time that they play New England, plus the pass rush with Miles Garrett and crew. And that New England offensive line has had a share of struggles here in the early going, despite being undefeated to date. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Here's second and seven now from the 28. He'll have a first down past the 40. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. 11 yards there, first down. The former seventh-round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback, and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert into being a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, <laughs> oh boy, it's been good. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. On the ground, this is Michelle. And he stopped immediately there. He was brought down by Brandon Copeland. I would think as a play caller, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was, because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stumped that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. On second down now, it's White, and he'll be stopped right at midfield. 11 yards there, first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays. Three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Delay of game, offense. So that'll back him up five. Come on, fellas. Still first down. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Following the penalty, Michelle. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. 
That was huge after being behind the chains on first down to make this second very manageable. Man, how much pride do you have in an offense on first down to get that kind of yardage? Because it actually opens up your playbook on second down. You can run it, you can throw it, you keep a defense off balance. I like that phrase, staying ahead of the chains, and they're doing exactly that. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Throwing is Brady on third down. That's complete. It's Gordon. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That goes for a gain of 31. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Under 10, under 10, 10. On the ground is Michelle, and he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Second and five now. Brady gets it to Gordon. And Gordon will work his way in for a New England touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Patriots have taken the lead. All drives that result in points hurt a defense, but when they are the sustained variety, play after play, and they just can't get off the field and stop them, that can be demoralizing. Nugent on now for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it's finished off by a Pats touchdown. After the touchdown, here's Mike Nugent now to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll fake the handoff. Now Darnold. Throw complete to Herndon. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Yes, 
So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. Darnold. He's got Herndon, his tight end. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Here we go, here we go. Mike's by four, Mike's by four. Darnold now to throw. This one caught by Crowder. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 20-yard line. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. when it's all said and done down to the 15 from the 21 frustrating for a defense energizing for an offense finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game that'll make the guys carrying the ball very very happy the last run got six now second and four I'm going back to you now a draw play this is Bell and he'll get it here to the 10 yard line a gain of five, good enough for the first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of their yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Go. Go. Now Bell. And Bell works his way in for a Jets touchdown. A 10-yard touchdown run as they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball, but how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. Now the try here for the point after. Now we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So the drive there took six plays, and it ends with a Le'Veon Bell touchdown run. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. So Brady and the Pats take over first and 10 at their 25-yard line. From the gun, it's Brady. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Okay, now I want to revisit what we were doing earlier, contender versus pretender. We did the AFC. Let's rock the NFC here, starting with the New York Giants. Pretender, but much improved. Okay, NFC North, how about the Vikings? 
Contender, no doubt about it. Carolina in the South, what do you think there? Contender and ascending. Okay, the quarterback play has become a good thing for them. Finally out West, how about the Arizona Cardinals? Pretender, the division's just way too tough. They're three teams better than them. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Brady now to throw. This is White on the screen. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. A five-yard pass on the heels of a five-yard run. Good enough for the first. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Brady, 9 of 11 passing in this first half. He's got his guys a first and 10. From the gun, they run with Michelle. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. On second down and four, Brady. He finds Dorsett. It's complete. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Now a first down carry. It's Michelle. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. On second down. It's White. Takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Coming up here at halftime, we'll ship you off to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman will have first-half highlights and analysis from a back-and-forth first half that we've seen. Got Gordon open, completes it. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 38-yard line. That time a slant, Brady in general on those quick hitters, he just releases the ball so fast. He does, and he's so accurate, but most of the time, he wins before the ball's even snapped by his pre-snap read. Finds out where the defense is and delivers it to the proper place. Now Brady gets away with one. Lucky could have been intercepted, but it falls to the ground. Julian Edelman, the intended receiver, and it's second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. It actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Looking back to the air on second down, it's Brady. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that'll force upon him a third and 14. Brady's saying let's go as he'll hustle him to the line. On third and long, it's Brady. A coverage sack took too long to get rid of it. 
The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. The Patriots send out their punter as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And you can't do it much better than that. This ball kicks out of bounds at the four-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. And New York set to take the field. Well, what's the plan of attack here? Very late second quarter, and look where the ball is. Yeah, a bad spot for you. But the defense has all three timeouts. So what you're telling your team is ball security number one. It's not all on the running backs if you decide to run the football. That offensive line has got to protect them and wedge out some space because you can't just kneel. They take three timeouts. They're going to get the ball back in good field position with a chance to put points on the board. You've got to try and get a first down and run out this first half. And space opened up a bit. He's able to take this up past the 10. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. And that run there does nothing but juice up the guys who are moving the football. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, people running it, actually the guy calling plays, you're almost jumping up and down in jubilation, aren't you? Yeah, now you've got options on second down. And big time options. You might want to think about play action and try and get something cheap right here over the top. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When Here they see that Here happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. The Pats at the line, ready to go. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game, we'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Gotta wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect, but overall, you like what your game plan's showing you. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. And it's Michelle once again. And a very similar result again. The Jets' defense once more stopping him behind the line. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. 
Shotgun now for Brady. Open man is Gordon complete. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets 41 yard line. Brady now, 13 of 16, throwing the football. It's first and 10. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Complete to Dorsett. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. On second down, Michelle. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That second down play nets a minus four. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe it'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. The Jets will bring in a nickel set here as they try to stop this third down. Operating from the gun. Brady, and he'll have his man. That's Edelman. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 25-yard line. Throughout his career, Tom Brady has made a living with the quick pass, hasn't he? How about that one? A little slant inside, and I think his arm's gotten stronger throughout his career, too. Yeah, you can just see one of many examples of why he's made more trips to the Super Bowl than any other quarterback. Footwork, intelligence, competitiveness, that's Tom Brady in a nutshell. Wait, wait, 20. Watch the curl, watch the curl, watch the curl. On first down, Brady. Able to get this to Gordon. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And it's scooped up by the Jets. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Here's the Jets offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. Seventeen yards for the Jets there as they've got themselves a first down. And he was the leading receiver for the Jets a season ago. Robbie Anderson, 50 catches, over 750 yards, and getting more and more comfortable with Sam Darnold. Now a year plus under their belts collectively. You'd figure that those numbers for Anderson might be trending further north. So a much rosier picture now after that last play. Here's first and 10 at the 19-yard line. To throw is Darnold. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. On second down, it's Bell. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. 
Lawrence Guy able to bring him down. That now brings up a very interesting identical situation on third down. Yeah, people couldn't see us on camera, but I love how you motioned to me like, throw the ball, this is a great shot to take it. Second and short, maybe take a big shot downfield. Instead, they ran it. Didn't work out for them very well. They should listen to you, partner. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. So first and 10 now from the 30. On the counter, here's Bell. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. And they'll try the air now with Darnold. On the catch, it's Crowder. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. From the gun on third down, here's Darnold. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football, but you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover, but doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah, and they had all that momentum after getting the football and now zapped right back in the other direction. Now Edwards to kick as he sends it away. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Here's Josh Gordon as he heads back out there now. And I know that they've double-teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. The Pats at the line, ready to go. And they got across the 50 last time, but fumbled and turned it over. So they'll be looking to have a short-term memory here, Mr. Davis. Not only a short-term memory, but a whole lot better ball security. <laughs> because if they take care of the ball, continue to move it, their chances of scoring some points, they've got to feel pretty good about. They thought they had things moving in the right direction last time. Fumbles. They don't just affect you on offense, they affect your overall team because now your defense has to make that stand up. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. On the ground, Michelle. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. The Jets are bringing a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. Now Brady. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Give him 15 yards on that one, and New England has a first down. When you run a screen pass really well, you gotta like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. Brady now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and 10. On first down, Michelle. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. 
Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Throwing now is Brady. Slant route caught by Edelman. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one, a gain of 20 in a first down. And finding Edelman underneath, that's a recipe for success. Typical route for a good slot receiver, and Edelman's one of the best in the game. Knows how to go inside what one of my college coaches used to call the briar patch. Got to go in there where it's tough and make those tough catches. And not only can he do it, he can often run away from people after the catch. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. Brady deferring to White on the draw. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. From the 44, Brady. He's got Lacoste, his tight end. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. From the gun, Brady. And able to find Dorsett. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 29-yard line. On first and ten, here's Brady. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Now Michelle. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball in this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Throwing is Brady on third down. He's got a man complete. It's Julian Edelman. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 13-yard line. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. Wait, that? Hit. Fly, Into the red zone, it's Brady. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, there in coverage. But there's no trace of nervousness there. He was able to diagnose that play from his linebacker position, stay in excellent coverage, and bat the ball away. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. On second down, they'll run with White. 
And strong running there as he's inside the 10 and down to the 8-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Now a play fake. Brady. And this is caught. Touchdown, Patriots. Josh Gordon, his second touchdown of the night as his guys are able to regain the lead. I know we often laugh and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. Extra point coming now for Nuja. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told, and it ends with a New England touchdown. After the touchdown, here's Mike Nugent now to kick this one away. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. The loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They'll go again with Bell. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Darnold now to throw, and this is caught to Marius Thomas. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Jet first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. 
Now this is Le'Veon Bell with a reception. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And he fires one that's intercepted. Devin McCourty picks it off. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Patriot defense has a touchdown. Oh, that's about as tough as they come. You're driving to try to put the ball in the end zone and tie the game, and that happens. It's exciting for us, wasn't it? Because we were thinking, hey, we might be headed towards overtime. Instead, it looks like this one may very well be done. And guess what? If you're a fantasy owner and you have that defense, you just had a big, big game, didn't you? Nugent on now for the extra point. He's got it as they double up the lead. This one's now 28-14. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be taken very short. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. And they just had that pick six. I guess the only positive maybe of them returning that for a touchdown, this offense right back out onto the field to try to make up for it. I like that because now it doesn't give them a chance to go to the bench and really settle, you know, to sit there and kind of seethe over the idea that they turned the ball over previously. Right back out there, it's almost like hopping right back on the bike after falling over. Mm -hmm. See if they can get the ball moving again. Yeah, we'll see if they can do it here. Darnold going to lead the Jets up now, first and 10 at their own 26. Fresh off the pick six, it's Darnold. Shakes off the sack. Under pressure now, Darnold, and he goes down. Michael Bennett, the former Texas A&M Aggie, dropping the hammer. Got to give him points for the attempt, but there's just a wave of pressure there. A host of people in the area evades a few, but couldn't evade all of them. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Out of the shotgun, it's Bell. Bell sheds him off. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. After the penalty, it's Bell. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looks like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Defense. 
Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. From the shotgun, it's a give to Bell. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 14 yards is the pickup there at a jet first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Back to throw, Darnold. Oh, he had six points in his hands there. Couldn't hang on. Second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Throwing again on second and 10. Darnold, Thomas has got it, complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 11 yards there, first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. They'll run on first down. It's Bell, and he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stop that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. On second and nine. Darnold, and he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. From 10 yards out, as his guys are back within a single score. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Extra point attempt to follow here. He's got it, and they're back within a touchdown at 28-21. A drive that time of six plays, and it's finished off by a New York Jets touchdown. This game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is 
do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Brady and the Patriots now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Here's Brady to throw. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Philip Dorsett, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Oh, he can't get away, and Brady will go down. Blowing that play up was Henry Anderson. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. Tough spot for the Pats now after the sack as Brady will lead him up third and long. Cover, cover. From the gun, it's Brady. Looking for Edelman, and he hits him. It's complete. And it's a fumble. And it's scooped up by the Jets. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. I know when you're looking at the scoreboard clock, we're getting near the end of this game. But they were in what was really called four-minute offense. And that's practice, being taking care of the football, taking time off the clock, not giving them a chance to come back. But bottom line is, what did I say in the beginning? Taking care of the football. That didn't happen. Didn't do it. A costly turnover. And now out come the Jets. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. So following the fumble recovery, here's Darnold. This one caught by Crowder. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 12 yards there, and the Jets have a first. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On first down, Bell. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. The officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. This is Bell. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Darnold to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Robbie Anderson, the man he was looking for, but now it's third and goal. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Caught here by Bell. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. They're able to hold him to three there, and that leads to a fourth and goal. Well, partner, they're still going to have to go for it after that play. 
and I'm not sure that the running game is going to be a part of what they have to do on fourth down now. From this far out, you wouldn't think so. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. And here we go on fourth, Darnold. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off with great anticipation. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Agreed, that's twice now in this fourth quarter. As a quarterback, a lot of times you think it's all on you to make plays when you're losing. And here, the play's not there, but he throws it anyway. The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field. Now, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So, in other words, someone got lucky because <laughs> they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. So Brady and the Pats take over first and 10 at the 20. So after the INT, it's Brady. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Brady now going to leave it with Michelle on the draw. And a very similar result again. The Jets' defense once more stopping him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. Brady. He's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds, so a big call there. That brings up fourth critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. The Patriots send out their punter, standing right on his own five-yard line. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And the Jets will take over first and ten. This Jets offense heading back out there now, led by Sam Darnold. And the interception that ended their previous drive, that might be one we look back on and say that was the turning point of this game. Hey, partner, guess what? There's still time for a few more turning points in this ball game. They're only one score down. Yeah, true. I think we could have some twists and turns. Stay tuned. Good starting position for the Jets as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He's got Herndon. He's tied in. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A good pick up there, a 22. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball, how much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. They'll run on first down. 
It's Bell, and that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Right there, 54, right there, right there. Here's Darnold. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. A shotgun snap for Donald. Found his target. It's Anderson. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 31-yard line. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Darnold from the gun. That's complete. It's Bell. And a nice gain of 21 yards. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. decision to make on the conversion down seven but first things first they need to score as they come up on first and goal now meanwhile a pass that should have been intercepted but it winds up falling incomplete i guess they're in a situation now fourth quarter where they're forced to take some chances but i don't know that that was a type of a chance you want to take and that one could very easily have been intercepted and if it does get picked off that could possibly seal this one They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. Darnold to throw again. And his throw is incomplete. I think someone's going to get in the QB ones here when he gets to the sideline. Already thrown an interception. That one should have been picked. Look, let's just be honest about it. That would be the second person in his ear because he's hearing it in the huddle right now. Not the start to the game he wanted. Like you said, the pick on the opening drive, second drive, not much better. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down. Just inside the 20 at the 19. Michael Bannon able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. They go for it on fourth and goal, but that winds up incomplete. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt, and the Patriots' defense is going to take over on down. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game, and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> Sponge! 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 No! Wait, 
They begin with Michelle on the ground. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. So they come up on second down. If they can get another run like we just saw, would likely put an end to this thing. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined. But sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. They'll try and run for it. Here's Michelle. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. They'll run with Michelle, and this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. They'll run it. This is Michelle, and he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? <laughs> the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. On third down, Michelle. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Nine yards on the carry there, but it'll be fourth down now. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. The Patriots send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. Critical condition here, obviously. Got to hope to get something quick right and then maybe take that shot deep. And once they do take the big shot, you've got to worry on defense. Of course, no one getting behind the defense and make it an easy throw. But nowadays, it's not just the ball being tipped in the air and people in the end zone in a cluster. It's that guy that's short in the end zone who comes up and ends up making the play because he goes unguarded. So there's a lot to think about if you're playing defense in this situation. We'll see if they can cover all their bases. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. One last throw now for Darnold. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end. But they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still... You're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot.
So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. Good night, everybody.